Almighty God says, If people wish to become living beings and to bear testimony to God, and to be approved of by God, then they must accept God's salvation. They must gladly submit to His judgment and chastisement, and must gladly accept the pruning of God and being dealt with by Him. Only then will they be able to put all of the truths required by God into practice. And only then will they gain God's salvation and truly become living beings. In the dispositions of normal people, there is no crookedness or deceitfulness. People have a normal relationship with each other. They don't stand alone, and their lives are neither mediocre nor decadent. So, too, is God exalted among all. His words permeate throughout all mankind. People live in peace with one another and under the care and protection of God. The earth is filled with harmony, without the interference of Satan, and the glory of God holds the utmost importance among man. Such people are like angels of heaven, pure, vibrant, never complaining about God, and devoting all their efforts solely to God's glory on earth. Amen. God's words show us that a normal person's disposition contains no deceit, selfishness, and despicableness, sincerely taking on God's commission, working harmoniously with brothers and sisters, and doing all they can for their duty, are the basic things a person should do. Yeah, that's right. I used to live by satanic philosophies such as, every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost, and once a student knows everything, the master will lose his livelihood. I was selfish and despicable, crooked and crafty, lacking a human likeness. It wasn't until I experienced the judgment and chastisement of God's words that these dispositions began to change. Thank yeah, thanks great. To God. I'd like to share my experience. Great. great. It was in June of 2018 when Brother Zhang joined our team to partner with me. At the time, I thought, I've been doing this duty for a while now, so I've got a grasp on the principles, and I've seen some results. Maybe at some point, I'll leave this team to take on a greater responsibility. I need to help Brother Zhang get up to speed as quickly as possible so that he can take on the work within our team. I proceeded to teach him the basic skills that I had learned in my duty. Three months later, I saw that Brother Zhang had a basic grasp of everything, and he was making really rapid progress. At that point, I started to feel threatened, thinking, Brother Zhang has been improving so quickly in his duty. If this continues... Won't he soon surpass me? If the leader finds out how fast his progress is, won't he give him an important position? When this occurred to me, I thought to myself, No, I need to hold back. I can't share everything I know with him anymore. From then on in our work, when I found Brother Zhang's skills were a little lacking, I just told him a few superficial things, without fully sharing my knowledge. I was aware that it wasn't the right thing to do, but then I thought about the old saying, once a student knows everything, the master will lose his livelihood. With him in the limelight, how could I make a good show of myself? I couldn't let him overtake me. As we continued to work together, whatever Brother Zhang asked me about, I'd give him a partial response and keep the rest to myself. Not long after that, the leader sought out Brother Zhang to discuss... <sighs> An important task. My heart quickened when I heard about this. I thought, I've been in the team longer than Brother Zhang. Why wouldn't the leader want to talk to me? Am I not as good as him? I've been the one training him. But now he's the golden child, and I'm pushed aside. He's in the limelight, and I'm forgotten. If I keep teaching him, won't he learn even faster? If he gets an important position... Who will look up to me then? So from then on in our work together, when I saw Brother Zhang run into difficulties, I didn't want to help him out. Our progress suffered as a result of these things not being resolved in a timely fashion. And because of this, the church's work kept being held up. I felt a little guilty and uncomfortable, but I still didn't reflect on myself. One day, my... Armpit suddenly started itching. 
and it just wouldn't stop. Even applying ointment didn't help. The next day, my arm started hurting so much, I couldn't move it. I realized that this condition was no coincidence. So I came before God in prayer and seeking. I said, Oh God, this condition started so suddenly. I know that your good will is behind it. But I'm too insensitive, and I don't know what your will is. Please enlighten and guide me. One day during my devotionals, these words of God suddenly came to mind. If you are unwilling to dedicate all you have if you keep it hidden and tucked away are slippery in your actions. This was a wake-up call for me. I'd been living in a state of desire for name and gain. Afraid that this brother would surpass me, so I was never full-on in our work, and I didn't want to share my knowledge with him. I saw that this was God warning me with that condition so that I would reflect on myself. Yeah, yes. I later read this passage of God's words. Unbelievers have a certain kind of corrupt disposition. When they teach other people a piece of professional knowledge or a skill, they believe the idea, once a student knows everything, the master will lose his livelihood. They believe if they teach everything they know to others, then no one will look up to them anymore, and they will have lost their status. For this reason, they withhold some of their knowledge not teaching people all they know, and keeping some tricks up their sleeves. They feel this is the way they can show their rank of teacher. Always keeping cards up their sleeves, and what sort of disposition is this? It is deceitfulness. Do not think that you are doing just fine or that you have not withheld knowledge, simply by telling everyone the most superficial or fundamental things. This will not do. Sometimes you may only teach a few theories, or things that people can understand literally. But novices are unable to realize any of the essence or important parts at all. You only give an overview without elaborating or going into detail, all the while thinking, Well, I've told you, and I haven't intentionally held anything back. If you don't understand, it's because your caliber is too poor, so don't blame me. We'll just have to see how God leads you now. Such deliberation contains deceit, does it not? Is it not selfish and ignoble? Why can you not teach people everything in your heart and everything you understand? Why instead withhold knowledge? This is a problem with your intentions and your disposition. Amen. Amen. God's words reveal precisely my own situation. I didn't want to teach the skills I'd learn to him for the sake of my own name and position. I was afraid that he'd get the hang of it and leave me in the dust. Thinking that the student would usurp the teacher's place. By always holding back, wasn't I being controlled by my selfish, despicable, crooked, satanic nature? Right, that's right. That's right. I also thought about when Brother Jean had just joined our team. My motivation for instructing him had been so that he could take on the team's work as soon as possible. I then have someone to hand my duty off to, because I've been hoping for a more important position. But when I saw how quickly he picked things up, and that the leader valued him, I became really concerned. I was worried that if he kept doing well, he'd surpass me sooner or later, that he'd supplant me. As a result, I didn't want to share what I knew with him. Sometimes, I knew he'd encounter difficulties in his duty, and I didn't want to help which ended up delaying the church's work. I saw that I was always working to protect my own name and position without giving any consideration to the work of God's house. I really was so selfish and deceitful. Yes, yes, yes. Without God's timely discipline having me develop that condition, I wouldn't have reflected on myself. I then read these words of God. Since gaining faith, you have eaten and drunk God's words. You have wanted to accept his judgment and chastisement and accept his salvation. However, if the principles by which you act and the direction in which you do things and conduct yourself as a person have not changed, the same as the unbelievers, will God acknowledge you as one who has faith? He will not. He will say you are still walking the path of the unbelievers. Thus, whether you are fulfilling your duty or learning professional knowledge, you must adhere to principles. You must do everything with truth.
and practice that truth. You must use truth to resolve problems, to resolve the corrupt dispositions that have been revealed in you, and to resolve your erroneous ways and thoughts. You must continuously surmount these. For one thing, you must examine yourself. Once you have done so, if you discover a corrupt disposition, you must resolve it, subdue it, and forsake it. Once you have resolved these problems, when you don't act based on corrupt dispositions, and when you can let go of your motives and interests and practice according to the principles of the truth, only then will you do what one who truly follows God is supposed to do. You must take the essence and main points of that professional knowledge, the things others have not fathomed or realized, and tell them to people, so that they can all bring their strengths to bear, and thence figure out even more numerous, more profound, and more mature things. If you contribute all of these things, they will be beneficial to people who are fulfilling this duty, as well as to the work of God's house. When most people are first introduced to some specific aspect of professional knowledge, they can only comprehend its literal meaning, whereas the part that involves the main points and essence takes practice for a period of time before people can grasp it. If you have already grasped these finer points, you should tell them directly. Do not make them waste time on some roundabout path. This is your responsibility. It is what you should do. Only if you tell them what you believe to be the main points and essence will you not be withholding anything, and only then will you not be selfish. Amen. 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 From God's words, I realized I needed to focus on self-reflection in my duty and seek the truth to resolve my selfish and despicable satanic nature. I needed to forsake my incorrect thoughts and ideas and be able to work as one with my brothers and sisters in my duty. Yes. yes. I realized that we all lack so much, whether it's in the truth or in our work. So brothers and sisters need to help and support each other in their duties and to fellowship on what they understand without holding anything back. By making up for each other's shortcomings this way, we're less likely to take detours. Exactly. exactly. Thanks be to God. In fact, me being a bit more skilled than Brother Zhang was entirely due to God's kindness. Yes. I should have been considerate of God's will, let go of my selfishness, and taught him everything that I knew so he could perform his duty well as soon as possible. That was God's will. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Yes. Thanks be to God. As soon as I realized that, I hurriedly came before God in prayer, willing to forsake my own incorrect thinking and no longer live by my selfish, despicable, satanic dispositions. I later sought out Brother Jean to have an honest chat with him about the state I'd been in and to dissect these satanic dispositions of mine. I also shared the key points of the skills that I possessed with him. Thanks be to God. Thank God. When I began to practice this way, I felt much more at ease and that health issue cleared up before I knew it. Thanks Great. be to God. Thanks be to God. I thought that after going through that, I had already changed. But these satanic dispositions were really deeply rooted. As soon as the right conditions came up, I just couldn't help but let those poisons show again. In March 2019, Brother Zhang and I were elected at the same time to be church leaders. At first, we worked really well together. Whether it was an issue within the church or a difficulty we ran into, we were able to resolve it by seeking the truth. But then one day, I overheard someone in the church say, uh, Brother Zong's fellowship on the truth is quite practical, and he's really responsible in his duty. Uh, hearing this sent me into inner turmoil again. And I thought, if I'm outdone by Brother Zhang, pretty soon I won't have any dignity at all. In all of our work discussions after that, I only pointed out mistakes and flaws, and kept the paths of practice to resolve them to myself. Sometimes, when he came to me to seek, I just grit my teeth and throw him a bit of a bone, afraid that if he understood too much, he'd just go resolve the issues and overshadow me. I remember there was one time when he was going to offer support to brothers and sisters experiencing weakness. He was afraid that without the right kind of fellowship, it would be fruitless, so he came to consult with me on what truths would be best to focus on. But my consideration at the time was that if I told him everything I knew and he went and dealt with the problem, the brothers and sisters would definitely look up to him. And then what would I share in the fellowship next time? Wouldn't he look better than me? So at the time I thought, no, I have to hold back something for me to fellowship on next time. 
so that they can see I'm the one more capable of resolving issues. I only gave Brother Zhang a brief overview, but mentioned no specifics, or anything really important. Since I was harboring my own selfishness and didn't want to share everything I knew with him, I intentionally avoided Brother Zhang and our work together, and we spent less time discussing things with each other than we used to. At times, I did feel really guilty, and I thought to myself, by doing my duty this way, I'm not working harmoniously with my brother, and it's not something God would delight in. But then I thought, if he ends up surpassing me, everyone will look up to him. So I didn't want to practice the truth anymore. I was constantly in such an unyielding state during that time, and God's righteous disposition came upon me. My mind was constantly in a whirl. My fellowship and gatherings like light, and I wasn't achieving much in work. And I'd nod off and fall asleep really early every night. I was also feeling more and more uneasy. At that point I realized that God had departed from me, and then I became afraid. I rushed to come before God and pray. Oh God, I've been living within my disposition of selfishness and despicableness. I know that this disgusts you, but I can't help myself. I can't rid myself of them. God, please enlighten me, so that I may come to a true understanding of my own nature and essence. After my prayer, I read this passage of God's words. Until people have experienced God's work and gained the truth, it is Satan's nature that takes charge and dominates them from within. What specifically does that nature entail? For example, why are you selfish? Why do you protect your own position? Why are your emotions so strong? Why do you like those unrighteous things? Why do you like those evils? What is the basis for your liking such things? Where do these things come from? Why are you so happy to accept them? By now, you all have come to understand that the main reason is that they contain Satan's poison. As for what Satan's poison is, it can be fully expressed with words. For example, if you ask some evildoers why they act that way, they will answer, Every man for himself, and the devil take the hindmost. This single phrase expresses the very root of the problem. The logic of Satan has become people's lives. They may do things for this purpose or that, but they are only doing it for themselves. People all think that since it is every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost, they should live for their own sakes, doing everything in their power to secure a good position and what food and clothing they need. Every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost. This is the life and the philosophy of man, and it also represents human nature. This statement is precisely Satan's poison and when internalized by people, it becomes their nature. Satan's nature is exposed through these words. They completely represent it. This poison becomes people's lives as well as the foundation of their existence. And corrupted humanity has been consistently dominated by this poison for thousands of years. Amen. Amen. Reading God's words showed me that I just couldn't help but live by my selfish and despicable satanic dispositions. Because Satan's poisons, like every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost, and once a student knows everything, the master will lose his livelihood, had become my very life. Indeed, yes. yes. I had taken them as positive things, as rules to live by. I thought that's how people should live, that it was how to protect ourselves. As a result, I became increasingly selfish and contemptible, only thinking of myself. I was constantly afraid that Brother Zhang would be better than me in the duty we performed together. So whenever we talked about work, I'd just gloss over things, doing the bare minimum, without sharing everything I knew. When Brother Zhang ran into problems in work and came to me for help, I didn't consider the work of God's house, but worried if I taught him everything, I'd no longer shine in the church. Even when I knew very well that it wasn't the right approach, I still didn't want to help him. 
I could see that I wasn't doing my duty out of consideration for God's will or to uphold the work of God's house, but that I was doing it in pursuit of personal fame. It really was incredibly selfish and crafty of me. Yes, yes indeed. indeed. Relying on those satanic dispositions in my duty, how could I possibly gain God's guidance and blessings? I thought that by not teaching what I knew to anyone else, I could be the best in the church and be esteemed by everyone. But it actually turned out that the more I held back, the darker my spirit became, and the more I was without God's guidance. It reached the point where I couldn't even do what I'd been able to do before. These words from the Lord Jesus then came to mind. For whoever has, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whoever has not, from him shall be taken away even that he has. Going through that made me truly appreciate God's righteous disposition. When I gave it more thought, I saw that being able to see some issues in my duty was entirely God's guidance and enlightenment. And without the guidance of God's words, I was blind. True. Unable to understand anything and unable to resolve problems. But I was totally lacking self-awareness. And I shamelessly mistook the Holy Spirit's enlightenment for my own ability. Hadn't I been trying to rob God of his glory? God can see into people's hearts and minds. I knew that if I kept doing my duty relying on satanic disposition, I'd certainly be forsaken by God. Yes. At that thought, I quickly came before God to pray, saying... God, I won't be so self-seeking and contemptible in my duty anymore. I really want to work well with Brother Zhang and do my duty well. Amen. Amen. After that, I read these words of God. Don't always do things for your own sake. Don't always consider your own interests. And don't consider your own status, face, or reputation. Give no consideration to people's interests. You must consider the interests of God's house and make that your first priority. You should be considerate of God's will. Start by contemplating whether or not you have been impure in your duty, whether you have done your utmost to be loyal, complete your responsibilities, and given your all, and whether or not you have wholeheartedly given thought to your duty and the work of God's house. You must think of these things. Consider these things frequently, and you will have an easy time performing your duty. When you reveal yourself to be selfish and ignoble and have become conscious of this, you should seek the truth. What should I do to be in line with God's will? How should I act so it benefits everyone? That is, you must first set your interests aside, giving them up based on your stature, a little at a time. After experiencing this a few times, you'll set them aside completely. And as you do so, you will feel more and more steadfast. The more you set your interests aside, the more you'll feel you should have conscience and reason as a human being. You will feel without selfish motives you are being an upright person, and you are doing things to satisfy God. You will feel that makes you worthy of being called human, and that living this way, you are being open, honest, and a genuine person. You have a clear conscience and are worthy of all the things bestowed upon you by God. The more you live like this, the more steadfast and brighter you will feel. As such, will you not have set foot upon the right track? Amen. 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 After reading this, I understood that if I wanted to do my duty well, I first had to think about how to uphold the work of God's house, how to put my all into work, and how to do it with responsibility. God's focus is on our attitude and our duty. His hope is that we face Him with a genuine heart, that we put our all into doing our duty well, and that we become people of conscience and humanity. Amen. Amen. Once I understood his will, I said a prayer to God, telling him I was ready to let go of my selfishness and stop considering my own interests, and that I would just do whatever benefited the church and my brothers' and sisters' lives. Amen. Amen. Yes. After that, I went and talked with Brother Jean, telling him about my selfish, despicable thoughts and my deceitful motives. We also sought the truth together on the problems and flaws in our work to resolve them, and I shared fellowship on everything I knew without reservation. Thanks, Thanks it's God. true. When I practice in that way, I experience such a feeling of peace. I felt how wonderful it is to be that kind of person, to be open and above board. Thanks be to it's God. It's so true. Living that way is Amen. wonderful. My state gradually improved and I 
started seeing some results in my duty, even though at times I still showed my selfish and despicable dispositions. The moment I thought about how that disgusted God had come before God in prayer, forsake my incorrect thinking and wish to practice according to his words. Amen. 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 Thanks, be Thanks, be Thanks be to God. Having undergone that kind of experience, I truly felt that doing our duty relying on satanic dispositions and rules can only make us more and more selfish, despicable, and self-serving. Indeed. We'll lose all human likeness. Not only causing ourselves pain, but also becoming unable to work well with others. And it does nothing but damage the work of God's house. When I practiced the truth as an honest person by God's words, and no longer schemed for my own interests, I had the Holy Spirit's enlightenment and guidance in my duty, and I felt inner peace. Yes. Yes. Thanks be to God. It was the judgment and chastisement of God's words that gave me a bit of understanding of my selfishness and deceitfulness. I was finally able to practice the truth and live out some human likeness. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.